one ambulance. Rigged with cameras for the first time ever. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Body mounted cameras. Record everything. Oh, it's going to be another two hour session of wearing the man bra. Hello, you okay? Am I turned up? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Apparently, it's going to be a fish oil lens on us and it'll make your face look even fatter than it is. <laughs> Where's the button, Jamie? It, it's there. We'll reveal what it's really like. Right, so, where are you hurting? To be a paramedic. Hello there, Lawrence. Do you know what? <laughs> High five, yeah, well done, love. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. We get life, we get death. We have a bit of everything. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. We're not in the Bronx. Yes! I think it's red one, let's go. Blue light! <laughs> Taking you right to the heart of the action. You come for that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the worst bit over. All right. To a bingo place when somebody's ill. Yeah. We went in in the middle of a game. Person, chest pain. Started talking to him. Woman at the side was going, shh, can't hear the numbers. This chappy opens the door and then he said, Oh, I am sorry. I I was intending on cancelling you. It, it's okay now. We've resolved the issue. Father had got his pants on back to front. <laughs> he needed to use the toilet and couldn't find the hole. <laughs> But I've rectified the situation now, so oh, you're not well. needed. <laughs> Normally, they call me, they contact me first, but I was out walking the cat round the field at the time. Walking the you, cat? He said the cat does insist on a walk round the field three times a day, and I thought, he doesn't though, does he? The cat doesn't insist. Saturday evening. And we're cleared? No. Are we good to go? Yeah. yeah. We ready for the next challenge? I'm not to... Yeah, I do sit quite far away. Like a go-kart. And yet you're not that tall, really. Thanks for that, lads. No, I mean, I like... I didn't know that. Uh... <laughs> I'll reach high things. Yeah. Me and Beth and have, um, when we go on an escalator, she has to stand one step below me. It's the only time I'm ever taller than her. That's funny. Loz Horobin and Dan Smith are on the night shift from 6.30 on Saturday evening until 6.30 on Sunday morning. Good, Dan. I've got the yawns already. I know. I'm starting to feel a bit tired. It's like 10 o'clock. You are all right there. Thank you. I need a job. We do. Keeping the West Midlands safe. A 999 call comes through. It's a red two, the second most urgent category of case. The patient is a man struggling to breathe. There's uh, some onset of breathing problems with chest and upper back pain. So it's deciding whether it's uh, respiratory or, or related to the heart. Dan has been an ambulance technician for two years, but he's now training to be a paramedic and is keen to use his more advanced skills. She's on my left here. They arrive at the house. Just be a sec, okay. 
and they find the patient's sister anxiously waiting for them at the door. Uh, is it you we've come to save? Yeah. <laughs> Can't get your breath. Can't get your breath. OK. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a little listen to your chest, all right? You're a diabetic. You're a diabetic. Do you have any problems with your breathing? No. No. OK. Just relax your hand for me. All right, thank you. So that's a 90 at the moment. Mm. You can pop this over your face, John, OK? Have you seen him at all today? Just breathe normally, OK? Just going to help open the airways up, OK? Because you've got a bit of wheezing on your chest. So it will just expand the little airways down in the bottom of your lungs. Hopefully you'll be able to breathe a bit more easier. His oxygen levels were low because he was he was breathing quite quickly. It can also be the cardiovascular system, so if there's heart failure, you get a retention of fluid. I'm just going to pop some stickers on your hands and your ankles, OK, just to do a heart tracing. John's 72 and had a stroke six years ago. Can we just do a, a more in-depth heart tracing, John? Put some more stickers on your chest. Loz has spotted something worrying on the heart monitor. She needs to get more readings. OK, John, if you just relax your hands onto your lap for me. OK. So this shortness of breath that you've got, um, does it get worse when you're moving around the house? No. No. So the last two days, it's not really been affecting you apart from when you lie down. OK. Her fears are confirmed. Looks like a left bundle. From the pattern of John's heartbeat, she can see he's got significant heart disease. No one's ever mentioned um, a left bundle branch block to you before, have they, John? No. It's the way your heart beats. Finally. It's understandable. OK, John. So when we did a 12 lead ECG, which was the stickers on John's chest, we discovered what we call a left bundle branch block. Basically means the electrical impulse has to travel further due to a blockage. If you've got chest pain and you've got a left bundle, it could be a heart attack. There we go. Get you nice and sat up right, John. OK, John, if you can have a seat on that stretcher for me, are you OK to shuffle across? Push your bum right back in there so we can get you sat straight up there. And then swing these legs up. With his heart not working properly, John is struggling to breathe again. You've uh, not been into hospital recently at all? No, no, no surgery or anything? No. So that little bit of exertion just from the stairs to the chair is really taking your breath away, hasn't it? Yeah. And when was the last time you saw your GP, John? Put that on your finger for me. Just catch yes. your breath, John. <laughs> Some time, right? Some so it's been a while. Yeah. Right, let's give you some fresh air. Just have your wrist, John. Just relax for me, that's it. They've been treating John for 27 minutes. Now they need to get him to hospital as quickly as possible for urgent tests on his heart. So what time did you get short of breath this evening? Was it just before you called us? Yeah. 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 Loz and Dan have managed to stabilise John's breathing and his oxygen levels, but he urgently needs to see a cardiac specialist to work out the severity of his heart disease. Sit back for me, John. That's it. OK, we're all plugged in. If they do find evidence of heart failure, he'll need immediate surgery. OK.
I think John's got heart failure. It's quite testing this job sometimes, because, like, you go to ten people with the same problem, everyone is different how you treat them, and then it's just making your decision what you're going to do. And a lot, a lot of the time, it's little things that indicate really big things, isn't it? Yeah. He's got no previous heart problems, and there's no heart problems in the family, but, like, when we get older, things start to fail, don't they? Preempting those things and making sure you point people in the right direction. Definitely. Nine 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 wound activated. So good that we've got the sat nav on there because if we had to get to addresses in like Warsaw and Blockswich and stuff, I wouldn't have a clue where I'm going. Jim. I, I, I don't think it would be too bad in walls. I could, like, plow my way through it. Can you imagine, like, being sent to Birmingham without the sat nav? Like, I don't know why I'm going to Birmingham with the sat nav. <laughs> it would be an absolute nightmare. Did they teach you on your driving course to read an A to Z? No. We had to be taught on how to use an A to Z. So it was just like, right, OK. We've got no sat nav, direct them. That would be my worst nightmare. You're not map reading. Nah. <laughs> go back to that, go to interview, yeah. and then click now. Make a paramedic out of you, yes. Hannah Simpkins and Michelle McNulty are just coming off their break. I can probably count on one hand how many times I've laughed so hard and cried with laughter. One of them is when I stalled the engine, <laughs> which then turned the blues and the lights off, so I started the engine again. Oh, but That's a I forgot That's a that the blues had gone off. So I'm trying to start the sirens again, but it's just going, ah, 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 ah. So Jack just goes, oh, well, uh, shall I be the siren, shall I? <laughs> so he winds down his window and he's going, Nina, Nina. And this woman is just sat opposite me, and I, I'm just laughing. What is this lunacy? And she's looking at me like, what is she doing? These people are employed to save our lives. Yeah. It's a 26-year-old female that's fallen with a head injury and a foot injury. I'm just going to buzz on and see if she's actually, like, fallen off anything. 4362. Six figure head. 6-2 reference to this uh, job. Just wondering if the patient has fallen from height or anything. Your yeah, report is still in progress. That's what we see. Thank you. Seven minutes after the call came in, Hannah and Michelle are on scene. Stop. But Hannah spots a problem. I think they've got a punctured tire. Something's hissing, but I don't know what it is. The puncture will have to wait. The paramedics' body cameras capture everything they do firsthand. Inside, 26-year-old Heather is in agony. Hello. Hiya. Oh, yeah. You OK, chick? Yeah, not really. What's happened? I only went to pull them off about yeah. 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And um, I've gone down the steps, cos I walk as you can see, coming up. Yeah. yeah. I've gone the back of my head, my neck is burnt in beast style. I thought it's gone the opposite way. Can you not move it at all? How have you got back in the house, chick? I crawled. <laughs> she crawled up the stairs, OK. Let's have a look. Can you describe how you fell to me? Were you walking up the stairs, did you I say, or down, 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 down the stairs? I just went... And you were on... Went crack. OK, can I you... I just walk... went kind of moving okay. my toes. You can't wiggle your toes. OK, I'm not going to touch this side of your foot, but I need to touch about here, see if you've got a pulse in your foot, OK? Patients like Heather who've got a suspected fracture need to make sure that there's no damage to the circulation. So if the bone uh, blocks an artery, then it can um, stop the circulation from getting to the rest of the limb, which means there's no blood flow there and eventually the tissue will die, um, which can be far more serious. You got any pain up here? Here. Here, OK. I'm just going to rest my hand on the back of there, all right? I'm not going to press or anything. <sighs> oh, sorry, Chuck, sorry. Heather also has pain in her back from when she fell. Look at the back here. Where's it hurting along here? Yeah. Did you bang your head as well? Yeah. Does it hurt when I'm touching? Yeah. You know when um, you fell, 
Did you feel faint or anything beforehand? You did? I was think it's normal because I've been on a diet anyway, because, you know, if you had a juice box... Heather's been on a juice diet for the last five days. It's possible that her low calorific intake has caused her to fall. I had one of my shakes and I was sick. Yeah. So I just thought nothing of this and went all the rubbish out and I just went. And then I could I had to sit there for about five minutes because I couldn't even move. On top of all that, Heather's just had her appendix removed and recently dislocated her hip. You're not having much luck, are you, really? I think this is to coast. Well, they say it comes in threes, so you've had your hip, your appendix, and now yeah, this. You're obviously going to need it x-rayed because you can't weight bear and you can't rotate it, you can't move it. And you have got quite a bit, I'm not going to touch it, don't worry, you've got quite a bit of swelling all around your ankle here. It might be... I think it's yeah. starting to bruise already. It might really? be that you've broken it. It could also be... I don't know, I broke you when I was 10. Did you? Same leg. Same ankle. It might be ligament damage. It might be pulled muscle or something like that. But given the amount of lack of movement that you've got in it, you're going to need an X-ray anyway. We'll go and get you a chair, obviously, to get you outside. We'll pop you up for an X-ray so you're all right. But it's not going to be quite as straightforward as that. Right. The other issue that we have is that our ambulance has a punctured tyre. So there will be another ambulance. We're going to sort you out now, do some paperwork, finish your observations. Have you mentioned a flat tyre? It's got, I'm not kidding you, a rock about that big in it, and the rock has got a point on it, and I've tried to, like, wiggle it and move it, and it is literally... You can hear the hissing as you're driving control. along. Yeah, I've told them. They're going to send a different ambulance to take you to the hospital, OK? But in the meantime, we'll start you with some gas and air, all right? Yeah. Right, you know what you're doing? Yeah. Nice, slow, deep breaths. <coughs> if it makes you feel sick or anything like that, then stop. Keep it in your mouth. You can exhale through the mouthpiece as well. Might make you feel dizzy and a bit like you've had a, a beverage or two, probably. Four, three, six, two. Six two, sorry to bother you. Uh, it's Royal Logistics, but you've got a, a puncture. Just wanted to know what uh, wheel positioning is on, please, Evan. It is the rear tyre on the right-hand side, on the driver's side. Yeah, we see no problem at all. It's uh, totally flat. Um, it certainly is flat as a pancake, over. Yeah, hold it. Keep it updated, please. Hello. You're all right? Our tyre's flat as a pancake. So yes, have... I spotted it. Yes. yes. So we have called for you lovely selves. Um, patients inside of it, shall I give you a hand over? Okay. All right. The second crew can now take Heather to hospital. In order to protect her back and neck, they immobilise her before moving her. It does the job and it keeps you still. All right. Right, I've got your arms, that's it. That's, that's it, that's it. That's it. You'll feel like you trust them. As Hannah's ambulance is out of action, Heather will now be cared for by the second crew. That's the worst bit over. All right. Really hurt. I've never known it's so powerful. You can get you sorted, don't worry, OK? Phone, slipper, top, OK? Put them there between your legs. With Heather safely in the ambulance, she can go to A&E. But Michelle and Hannah are going nowhere till they get their puncture fixed. I always think there's going to be a train coming at some point. You, oh, no. Do you keep your eyes open or do you shut them? What do you mean, <laughs> so I keep my eyes open? If I'm going through a level crossing, I, I slow down, but I shut my eyes just in case. Uh... Yeah, if I'm going to be hit by a train, I don't want my eyes open when it happens. Mm, that's true. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to see my fate coming towards me. No. No, and after I've seen what a train can actually do to a person. Uh -huh. Gaz Clark and Mike Arrowsmith are on a day shift, but Gaz is already thinking about the weekend. Meant to be going away with the army. This weekend? Yeah. Is it? Where was your two? Just down Monmouth. What, so do you go down there as a medic? Or? Yeah. I'm the regimental medic for the Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers. For the what? Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers. Monmouthshire? Yeah. Royal Engineers? Is that the same as the Reamy? No. Is that, what's the Reamy, then? 
Royal Engineers minus education. No, um, <laughs> Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. Ah. They're mechanics, they're the AA. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I can see you getting a lot of hate mail after this. Oh, God, yes, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. They're called to a GP's surgery, where a 10-week-old baby is making what's described as a grunting sound each time he breathes. Hiya. Hello there. Hi. What's been going on then, Mum? Well, he's got really nice breathing and chest. Right. And um, he's been off the bubble bit already. I know. Just keep sending him on. Right. The muscles between baby Akoni's ribs are sucking in, a sign of respiratory distress. <laughs> the GP has already phoned the hospital's paediatric assessment unit. So I spoke to PAU and I said to look, can I just admit him uh, to PAU directly? He did the and I said, no, if he's grunting, he needs to go to a &E. If you can just lift him up to you, Mum, and put his chest onto yours. No, so he's vertical. Any breathing problems, we need in vertical. That's lovely. Ikoni's breathing is clearly laboured. Mike attaches a probe to the baby's toes to check the level of oxygen in his blood. Does his breathing ever get better than this? You know, when he's sleeping, he's fine. But when he's not really thinking about it, yeah. chilled, relaxed, yeah. breathing's normal. But it does seem in the upper throat rather than his chest. When Lisa feeds the baby, the grunting noise also stops. If it was more close, it should be able to hear it in his lungs, wouldn't it? More so, yes. It depends how you're listening at the time and that. You normally need to listen to the front and back. I've listened to the back. The back of your chest being the longer part of your lungs and not as much in the way. So you tend to hear quite well. Thank you, nephew. The family live just across the road from the surgery, so Lisa's going to nip home for the car seat, leaving Mike holding the baby. We'll come back in oh. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Oh. Oh. Very comfy, though, mate. So. <laughs> Once they've got the car seat, they can start the journey to Walsall Manor Hospital. Yeah. It's more chilled. Yeah. Do we think the sound noise? Mm -mm. It's like a dog, yeah. Nah. It needs further investigation. The doctor's right, and um. <laughs> If he makes a referral, it takes time. If we go up now, like you tried to get him in at PA, which is exactly the right place to go. But Akoni soon becomes distressed. Oh, my, oh, my. He's gonna start holding it. No, he wants a bottle, does he? No, he doesn't. He's gonna start like Oh, mate. No, it's not like anything staying in like this. Gaz needs to calm down his breathing so his condition doesn't worsen. Standing up in the back, Mike. All right, mate. Come here. Look at the chest. Sat back down. Once Akoni calms back down, they continue their journey. And just four minutes later, they arrive at hospital where Akoni can be assessed by paediatricians. Yeah, nice and steady on the round there. It's 10 to 9 in the morning. Dan Edwards and Mike Arrowsmith have been sent to Wensbury. A 50-year-old male, stroke, neurological fitting. Able to be rolled onto his sag. What's in the so notes? He's had a fit, hasn't he? Patient is having a stroke and having a seizure. Hello. Oh, 
downstairs. Yeah, you alright? What's going on? Hello. I had another scrap, I think. What makes you think that? Because I've had five. And um, of these. The last one I had. This went and the one just all that went again. So Dale's care assistant Tammy was in the house when he became ill. He has passed out top of the stairs, treating to the right hand side of the face. He's got tingling sensation to his left hand, which he said he's now coming back. He's got a quite disorientated. He's quite clammy to the back. So it was like yeah. his muscle spasm inside yeah. the face. It wasn't a droop or anything like that. No, it's more like a muscle spasm. Since Dale's first stroke three years ago, he's had limited use of his left arm. Squeeze my hand as tight as you can. Squeeze. You won't hurt, OK? So squeeze as tight as you can. Hold your hands out in front of you. Close your eyes. I've been all right for 14 months. Right. And it was exactly the same as the last one I had. But it's all to do with this. Dale has previously had an operation to clear a blocked artery in his neck, one of the most common causes of strokes. They've got the cholesterol down to... I think it's 3.7 now, because it was all to do with all that. Rubbish. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Mike tests Dale's temperature, heart rate and blood pressure. They're all normal. Where, where, whether you've got anything going on or you've had something going on remains to be seen. I and mean, there's not a lot we can really do here to prove that. It's more than likely going to be a trip up the hospital, chap, all right? Do you want to go on a chair or do you want to sit on the bed? Yeah, I'll sit on a chair. Dale's not been able to work since he had his first stroke. So what, did you say it was all due to your cholesterol, did they, originally? Is that what they put it down to? High blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking 60 a day, uh, <laughs> drinking 20, yeah, 25 points a day, straight at the pub, one ah, day, you know what I mean, yeah, day yeah. and night. Since then, he's had a major lifestyle change and quit smoking. Changes everybody. It change, don't only change your life, it changes everybody's life around. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. I was 47 when I had my person. You look 47, I think you're going to live forever, don't you? Yeah. Have you had any breakfast yet? Dan yeah. wants a full picture of this morning's episode so he can hand over to staff in A&E. Were you going down the stairs or upstairs? I felt it when I was just come out of the bathroom. And I couldn't... Shout, you know what I mean? I couldn't make myself aid because. Then you passed out. I don't remember passing out. I just remember the sweating and the, the twitching. It's a short drive to Walsall Manor Hospital. If tests show Dale has had a sixth stroke, it will confirm his worst fears. on a different job. Whiskey Victor 3, 9 uniform. Check you with your phonetic alphabet. <laughs> they might cancel us off this, it's a green too. Stand down. <laughs> I knew that, as soon as it went green too. Oh, you are having a fudge cake. No way, we're not going to get... Oh, oh better. <laughs> Always looks a bit suspicious, doesn't oh, it? You put your it traffic, does. you put your lights on to get through traffic, and then you get stood down and you turn them on. The other day we were swapped, swapped from jobs about three or four times, and we were driving up and down the Litchfield Road, island to island, for about five minutes. And I thought they must think I'm absolutely bonkers and don't know where on earth I'm going. It's lunchtime on the Friday before a bank holiday weekend. Dan Edwards and Shane Jones have been called to a man who's vomiting in a shopping centre. Hello. You all right? What's going on? OK, you're vomiting it off. Yeah? Do you feel unwell in any other way? 
No dizziness or anything like that? OK. Just get a quick blood pressure on you and then we'll have a walk to the ambulance, save doing everything in here, all right? Matthew has recently had major surgery. His dad says he only left hospital four days ago. Has it just come on all of a sudden? Yeah, he's been like this for... since. Since the are? Yeah. He hasn't had nothing to eat hardly. Every time he asks him to eat, he brings it immediately back up. Yeah. Do they know about all this vomiting since the operation, the doctors? Yeah. yeah that, I had to go back up the hospital, was it yesterday, to get some more medication. And what have they said when you told them? Nothing. They just gave me some uh, anti-sickness tablets. OK. So... I'll give you that for the walk now, just to find one if you need it. Matthew's operation was to remove a stomach ulcer. This is his first trip out of the house. Right then, have a seat on here. Right. Did they advise you that perhaps it might, you know, it might take a couple of weeks for your stomach to settle after the operation? Um, yeah. Okay. Have you always been quite a small-framed character, or is it since you've had this medical problem have you lost a lot of weight, or? I've always been a bit on the thin side. Okay. <laughs> But I think I've lost a little bit more weight. Why did they operate on the ulcer? Because they tried to treat it with drugs first. The vaccine works, so they I know it was to operate. Where was the ulcer? Was it in your stomach or in your intestine? It was in. Have you got a scar? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it we're, we're talking like intestine region, aren't we? Yeah. When he was uh Rushed in last uh, fortnight ago. He was just down to six down. Shane notices a pulsating beneath Matthew's skin. Have you normally got a pulse, at, like a pulsating tummy there? Um, well, never it could be an aneurysm or swelling of the main blood vessel leading from the heart. If the mass in Matthew's abdomen was an abdominal aneurysm, we'd have to treat it very seriously. Um, as it's a potentially life-threatening condition. For, for a gent of Matthew's age, he's been through a lot. Um, he's got a lot of conditions that have put him into bed for quite a long time, so have been quite detrimental to his life with him being so young. I couldn't feel like any, like a butt, like if you... No, that's just because you're, you're quite thin. We all naturally have a pulsation there, but because there's nothing to you, see it just more, seems that it's a lot, you know, in. yeah. With the scar alone, it's major abdominal surgery that you've had, so... Yeah. You know, we're talking a good month before we're going to start getting back to some sense of normality. But perhaps if your body's keeping down liquid food, you know, soups, yeah. pureed stuff, that, that, that kind of business, then it might be worth sticking to that and then slowly building up to solids again. From, from an A&E perspective, I, I can't really see them doing anything as such that perhaps your GP couldn't do. But the decision's entirely yours. We just give you the information and you make yeah. the decision yourself. Yeah. All I want to do is to vomit the turkey stopper and, and start eating again. Dan thinks Matthew's GP can help. Let's give him a ring then, try and see if we can work our magic. <laughs> you don't seem too convinced. No, well, yeah, I am. <laughs> not with... Well, it's either dog, it's the, it's the receptionist, so... Uh, pass, it's, yeah, getting past it. Oh, I can, past I can work my way around then. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you all right? My name's Dan. I'm a paramedic for the ambulance service. Dan gets past the receptionist. Yeah, he's got no pain. He sees surgical scars he healing. He's got no infection signs. It's just more he's, he's trying to get him something for the vomiting and perhaps getting some... Um, you know, like vitamin and mineral replacements, because he's lost a lot of weight and he's quite emaciated. Can you do 440 this evening? Can you do 440, 20 yeah. to 5, yeah? Yes, yeah? Yeah, that's great, thank you. Brilliant, appreciate your help, thank you. Bye. Boom. Thank you. If the, I mean, the do if the doctor's got significant concerns and would like you seen at hospital, the benefit you've got there is they can admit you to a ward directly so you don't have to go to A&E. After spending 45 minutes with Matthew, they send him home with his dad. 
like I said, any problems, any concerns, yeah, the 111 number, all right, and then... And, then, and if it's bad, there's us as well. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you for your help. No problem Thank at you all. for getting the duck, Tony. Party time, guys. <laughs> Thursday morning, the first of four 12-hour shifts for Mike Arrowsmith and Gaz Clark. So. Oh, hello. Oh, Trauma. They've been called to an 89-year-old woman who's fallen in her kitchen. The fire brigade is already at the scene. Medication, she's That's Jean. Oh, blooming neck, Jean. Oh, Jean, you're quite wedged in there, aren't you? are not troubling anyone. No one can work out how Jean has managed to fall into such a tight space. Her partner, Len, is recovering from a stroke, so has been unable to help her. Does it hurt anyway? No. No? Quite, quite unlikely. So how... Oh, no, it's really just Yeah. How come you fell over, then? I suffer with my balance, right? Yeah. I did have a scan at the Neil Cross a few years ago and I said it was something to do with me uh repression. Right. And um anyway, that falls but nothing like this one today. Yeah. But I really went down. I turned quick I think oh, I'm going. <laughs> But then I couldn't go your possible Right, no. Press that. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, like, that's the best thing to do, Bab. Unless we can say that. The local fire service are piloting a scheme where they respond to non emergency calls from people who've fallen. But as they're worried about Jean's history of falls, they've called the ambulance service. No, just keep still. Keep still. Any pain around there, my love? No. Nope. That's it. It's lovely and cosy and dreary, isn't it? I tell you what, you've done a good job getting yourself underneath and in it. And... I know. <laughs> so there's no pain in your hips? No. Nope. Nope. How about this leg? Right, till you get me up. Any pain in that knee? No. Oh, well, I do suffer. Only your normal pains? Yeah. Wiggle your toes, Jean. That's it, lovely. I bet you've never seen me underneath of your counter, have you? You ain't paid, you know, I can tell you that, love. <laughs> there are no obvious signs of injury at this stage, but Jean's already problematic blood pressure is high. What we need to do, Jean, is get you out from underneath here. No, 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 it's quite easy. We just grab your ankles and pull. Yeah. Oh, OK. We've got fire quite, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> With pure mechanical reason. In actual fact, they're going to use slide sheets to slip her along the floor out from under the counter. <laughs> One, two, three, slide. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. And we'll do it again a bit further round. Yeah. One, two, three, slide. Ooh. That's it. Just relax again for us. How yeah. do you feel now? That wasn't so bad up to now, is it? No. Didn't have to do anything. Did Rather than simply lifting her onto her feet, they're using a special cushion that gradually inflates underneath her and gets her off the floor. With Jean, she had ongoing problems with arthritis, so if we had just lifted her underneath the arms, that could have caused her a lot more pain or even damage. So by using a lifting cushion, slowly lift her up, nice and gentle, nice and easy, nice and relaxed. All the anxiety is going to disappear, she's going to be nice and comfy, and we can get a true reading on what she's actually like. <laughs> Right, sweet. I'm just going to roll you towards me a little bit, all right? Yeah. That's it. And I'm going to slide this little cushion underneath. <coughs> OK. OK, then roll back for it. Right. Now, can we see about just sitting you up a little bit? Uncross your arms, say. Uncross your arms. That's yeah. it. Grab onto my elbow. Have oh, faith in us. Oh. Bend in the middle. Bend a bit. Arise, my child. <laughs> there we go. And now, we're just going to go up in the air. Oh, my God. You're going to levitate. I didn't think it was going to work, then. It's a bit weird, cos it wobbles. You just feel so unsteady on it. 
It takes about a minute to get Jean upright and sitting on a normal stool. There you go. Sit. There we go. That's lovely. How'd you feel? Uh, any pain? Oh, don't do it again. <laughs> don't be throwing yourself on top of gas. Oi. Should we have a sit in the living room? Eh? Yeah. Nice and steady now. Len and Jean have been together for 30 years, but still haven't got round to getting married. While Mike does some final blood pressure checks, Gaz decides to entertain them. What type of cheese do you use to get a grizzly bear to come out of the woods? <laughs> come on, bear. Oh. It's like, what kind of cheese do you use to hide a small horse? Mascarpone? <laughs> I've got a captive audience here. Move the Zimmer frame, she can't get away from me. Gary's cheese jokes. They were all right once, when I heard them the first time. Uh, hearing them every shift, every job, every patient, they become a bit tedious. Did you hear the one about there's a bomb went off in a factory? It was a cheese factory. Apparently, there's debris everywhere. Jean decides she doesn't want to go to hospital. Gaz and Mike's work here is done. At some point, let your doctor know you had another tumble, just so they've got it on record, oh, yeah. yeah? And if ever you fall again, you just press that button yeah. and you get us or the, or the uh, Trumptons out, the fire brigade, will come and pick you up. You don't get Len. If he says, I'll get you up, you tell him no. Yeah. Now, either one of you fall, the other one doesn't even attempt to pick them up. Yeah. We don't want you hurting yourself trying to help out each other, yeah? yeah. When they x-rayed Heather's ankle in A&E, they found it wasn't broken, just badly bruised. She was told to put ice on it and rest. She's since made a full recovery. Matthew was prescribed meal replacement drinks, but two months later, he's still being sick and has collapsed several times. His doctors have said he'll be on liquids for some time until he fully recovers from his stomach operation. Doctors think a flopping larynx is to blame for baby Akone's noisy breathing, but he's been referred to the ear, nose and throat department for further investigation. Dale did have a mini stroke. After undergoing neurological tests and taking blood thinners, he was discharged. He has to go back for another brain scan to check for any new blockages in his arteries. John was admitted to hospital that night and taken into surgery the following day for a procedure to open up his arteries. Sadly, he didn't survive the operation. 